This is Len Oliver again. Um, I just thought I would show you something new that I've been playing with in my classroom. And I'm calling it skins. Or I have uh, many kids who are in my classroom who have uh, reading issues. And one of the things that stand out with the Google Classroom setup is that a lot of the text is very small and hard to see. But these kids are very strong when it comes to recognition of graphics. Also, some of the material are in a couple of different spots. What I thought was create something similar to what they're doing with the emoji stuff using Google Slides. And by using Google Slides, create something that is going to use their strength to help them in Google by creating something that they can get that information from Google Classroom. First example right here, before I go into the view option for you to see, looks like a book bag with different things on it. And then down right here are different slides that become interactive only in certain sections, almost like I'm mapping them. Let's just take a look at it. I'll show you how I put it onto my Google Classroom. I come down this way, and I'm looking for something that says publish to web. Let's just go. And this gives me a URL that I can add to the link option in a Google Classroom assignment or in a Google Classroom uh, materials. Now, once that's posted, I'm able to send that to the kids, and the kids won't be able to edit anything that's there. So what you're seeing here is a slide. Change the orientation to make it look more like a bag, uh, to make it look a little less like slides. Now, I have some common areas that they usually click on that they have some problems finding, such as their email. Let me close that. Chat, which we use for a lot of questioning and waiting your order for questions. Jim. Our phys ed teacher, when we are forced into isolation. Same with our music teacher. Our library, where you're able to go in and get books from the school library or find out which books are into the library. A password vault, when the students click into that, I have a Google folder set up. They have all of their passwords placed into and they are locked to myself, the aide, and uh, that individual student for each one. Then when you go in here, you get a few more slides and set up like agendas. So you have your LA lessons, math lessons, science, different math tools the students may need, LA lab for writing, social studies, and health. At any time, when students want to go back to front of the book bag, you can pull that zipper and boom, you're back. Now, let me go back into the agenda and you'll notice if I click on spots that I don't want students to click, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. But if they click on the LA Today, it will open up to the lessons that I want the students to do today. If you notice, they're short and sweet, mainly because once they, I do a lesson the following day, it goes into my retired one. Now, watch quickly. I'll close the slide. The book bag is still there with the agenda open. It doesn't load up in the same page. It's there for the kids. And all retired work goes here. So they're able to look through for stuff that they have missed. But you don't get that overwhelming bang of information hitting you every single day unless you need to have it. <clears throat> the main links that will be associated with uh, what they have to do will be right here. They'll be able to come back to the book bag to go into those sections. Let me show you really quickly. Another one that the students have is designed around a phone. And though you can't quite hear the sound because it's a little too low, uh, the sound will sound like they are receiving a text message. 
and they go in and it breaks it down to a lesson format. Normally you would hear a ding, you click on this, and you'll hear keys rattling for a little while, and it talks about what we're going to do. And for certain students, I can have the links directly there. For others, they know then, they can leave this open, come back here, and go into their epic, and they can search forward for these different things. Now, I'm just going to show you what it looks like in Teacher Edit. The actual thing that you have here, if you'll notice, I can click certain spots and there is nothing going to happen. Yet I can click other spots and I'm getting links to something outside, such as my Google Classroom or my playlists. Now, some of it, I have it set up so that there is a shape on top of it. And I highly recommend you put a block. The stuff that I do not want to change, such as science, that right there, I have that placed there so that when I put the shape on top, I am able to ensure that those links, those things do not send me to the next page. The other thing that I have to make sure is that this slide itself is actually linked to itself so that when students try to click anywhere that I don't want to be active, it's going back to its own slide. Okay? So there's a little bit more to it than that, but I want to try to keep this under uh, 10 minutes. Um, if you want to know more, just send me a message.